What? What are we doing back here? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? To crash our motorcycle into a wall! Well, now that we've done that, let's go fill up our sub-tanks. I think there are other stages where you can do this, but I've always just come here because this is just the one I'm used to. Okay, so what you want to do is stop jumping around and grab Silk Shot. Charge it up, and BAM! Bunch of free energy. This can be done as much as you want until you have full energy on all your sub-tanks. Really easy. In my experience, one charge usually equals one filled sub-tank. I think Bubble Crab has a spot for both weapon energy and life energy. But since we don't have any kind of weapon tank, that's kind of useless. Alright, so now we're all stocked up, we've got full sub-tanks. It's time for the final battle in this destroyed, incredibly hazardous fortress of awesomeness. And why are we back here? I mean, I picked the right stage, right? Well, I did. Yes, what you're seeing here is both Magna Centipede's level and the final level. This is a complaint from a lot of people that they reuse this level, and yeah, it pisses me off too. Still, it does acquaint to one of the reasons why I went to Magna Centipede first. I think there's a nice contrast with it now that we're coming back with all the weapons. And finally, Mega Man has enough bravery to run past that section. Because really, these blocks are only intimidating, even with severed heads inside of them, only once. And now, for old time's sake, we ride! Not as impressive the second time around. Oh well. You, uh, having a little trouble getting in there, Sigma? You're kinda repeating yourself. Uh, hey, Zero. Wait, what? Zero? Look who I found, wandering around, X. My friend here has a small problem with you. It seems that you let him die, and he's not too happy about that. Now I think it's time that he repays the favor! Yes, as you can see, we don't have Zero's parts anymore. Zero has turned on us. Zero is one of those bosses who has a fairly discernible pattern that is just really hard to dodge. Speedburner is good when fired on the ground because his shots will cancel out yours. Other than that, the key to this battle is to keep moving. Keep your distance from Zero as much as possible and you should be fine. On a more positive note, this music is amazing! <clears throat> anyway, I find that this is a good kind of punishment for not fighting all the x -Hunters. Zero isn't insanely difficult if you have all your power-ups, but the amount of damage he can do to you will hinder you for the next two boss fights. And if you die on any of them, you have to start all the way back at zero. Well, it's over now. Good fight. Oh shit, he's coming back! Oh, never mind. Zero. Followed by an incredibly long bout of silence. Do you... remember me? Yeah, I was actually fully conscious through all of that. I just really, really wanted to beat the crap out of you. X, you need to go after Sigma. I'll try and destroy the main computer. It'll be difficult because you shot me a lot, but I'm awesome. I'll be fine. And then X proceeds to prove himself a total asshole. Put you back together again. You didn't even put him back together in the first place. Douche. Even if he did, just... What an asshole! Well, it's nice to know that even heavily damaged, Zero has enough strength to punch a hole straight through the floor. And you know what? I'm done with this bullshit timeline! I'm going back to the one that at least I consider canon. Now we actually have all of Zero's parts. And Sigma's still having teleport issues. And now Zero's black. <coughs> Racist. Look who I found wandering around. I've already read all of this dialogue. I'm not going to do it again. Also, I am apparently colorblind. Because I couldn't pay enough attention to paint my fake Zero the correct color. I mean, really, you'd think I- Oh, no, never mind, he's dead. Enter badassery. Sigma, you should have studied the blueprints more carefully. There's only one Zero. Wait, Zero! I know your secret! You were destined to follow me! Maybe so. But I still don't like you. Fine. If you will not follow me, then I'll watch you die once again. Sigma, you are the only one who is going to die. Feel the wrath of Zero. 
Zero! Sorry to keep you waiting, X, but the greetings will have to wait. We have to destroy all the Mavericks, including Sigma. I'll take out the main computer, and you follow Sigma. Let's go! Zero is awesome! Here it is, X. Sigma lies just ahead. I love you, Zero! Okay, I'm just gonna gush for a minute. I love Zero. He is a total badass, and hands down, my favorite character ever! Just no contest. It couldn't be anyone else. You are merely a bothersome insect, X. It's about time that I crush you beneath my heel. Oh yeah? Will you go ahead and get out your claws? I'll get out mine. Only mine are detachable and fly around all over the place and hit you in your stupid face. Hey, that rhyme. Interestingly enough, Sigma seems to be using the electric spark ability from Mega Man X1. If you can't see the similarities now, just wait till he charges it up. As you can see, Sonic Slicer works very well. It's wonderful at hitting him. And I like to think of it as kind of a blade versus blade type deal. Oh, there's the charge up. I'd also like to take this time to apologize for any cracks or pops in the audio quality. I have no idea what's going on with my microphone. I've done multiple takes of everything and it keeps happening. And that's gotta hurt. If only Sonic Slicer cut all enemies in half like it does to Wire Sponge. That would be awesome. But I guess we'll just have to settle for prolonged explosions. And an ominous change in music. And a floating head. With a misshapen mouth. Seriously, what's up with that? Anyway, this battle. I've always thought that it symbolizes the eternal struggle. You can't see it, but Sigma has a massive amount of health. And I think it feels like he has even more health because he doesn't have a health bar. It feels like he just won't die. But at the same time, it feels like you just won't die either. If you're coming into this battle with four sub-tanks, there's almost no way you can lose. He keeps spawning in enemies that have a fairly high health drop rate. Combine that with the fact that you have to fully charge your buster before you can do any damage to him, and you have quite the long battle. Believe it or not, though, Strike Chain will make things go much quicker. It can hit him without the need to charge up and does a very nice amount of damage. I'll bust it out a little later for comparison's sake. As you can see here, he is a little tricky to dodge with the minions and such. Sometimes he just likes to corner you and spawn them right on top of you. And sometimes, if you don't think you can avoid his laser, it is possible to run to the other side of the room and avoid it. It doesn't always work though, so jump over him if you can and use that as a last resort. As you can see, he does have somewhat of a health indicator, in that he changes color when you've done enough damage to him. Once you get him down to his last color, he'll start doing a desperation attack. But you should notice that right away when he starts to do it. This battle is also a little surreal. I mean, aside from the fact that you're fighting a giant head, he can spawn things out of thin air, and when you hit him, the background gets all pixelated. I like to think that Sigma's actually inside that computer. It has a creepy face and everything, and it looks like it's taking the damage instead of Sigma. And really, that kind of makes sense. Sigma is a virus. He could very easily live inside of a computer. And really, when you think about it, what is a robot but a big computer? With, like, laser eyes and stuff. Because you just don't build robots without laser eyes. It's like Asimov's fourth law of robotics or something. Thou shalt not build robots without laser eyes! Asimov commands it! And I think we're far enough into the fight where you can really get the point I was making earlier. This is the absolute longest final boss battle in a Mega Man X game. If you're using your buster, like I said, Strike Chain will make a lot faster work of it. Oh look, I got Gank Crush energy back. That'll be... useful? You know what, I haven't really shown it off yet, so here's just how useful it is. Yay! Cool looking, but not very useful. And I'll switch to Strike Chain now. The battle doesn't really change as he changes color, he just gets faster. 
And see, he's already changed color. Strike Chain is very useful here. Well, I guess it did need some redemption. It doesn't quite make sense, though. Why is Strike Chain his weakness? It doesn't really work thematically or pattern-wise. I mean, really, pattern-wise, just about anything would work. Maybe he is hiding in the computer, and the idea is that he's a head teleporting around. I mean that Strike Chain is pulling him out of the computer. I mean, really, that's about all the sense I can make of it. Oh, by the way, pro tip, dodge these! If he gets you with that attack, he will envelop you, and I guess he's like trying to take over your programming, and it will hurt a lot. On the bright side, if he does catch you, it gives you an excellent point to just wail on him with Strike Chain. Anyway, the battle's almost done. As you can see, he's a very dark red right now. And I think that did it. I think it's time for another sport. How about Dodge Head? No? Don't like that one? Okay. I think I broke him. Hey look, more evidence for the theory that he's hiding in that computer. I wonder, was he there the entire time? Like, since our very first run of this stage? X, I have lost to you again. Each defeat only makes me stronger and serves to bring you closer to your ultimate doom. But something's not right. I don't quite understand. Why did Zero... He is last of the Doctor's creations. No, not doing the screen. I made too much of a fool of myself last time. Oh, fine. Ah! I'll be back, Spider-Man! I mean, Mega-Man! There is no possible way you could escape my explosions, unless you have somehow become desensitized to- Oh, crap. Kaboom! Aw, oh, we didn't get to see the actual place blow up. I'm sad now. So you know what? This music is actually very fitting. All kidding aside, this is a very nice music track, so I'm just gonna shut up and let you enjoy it, and then I'll come back and torture you with reading more text. Joined by his friend Zero, Mega Man X gazes out over the sea. Sigma has once again been destroyed, but X wonders if the fighting will truly end. Was Dr. Light's dream of a world in which reploids and humans live together in peace merely a dream? The price of peace is often high, X thinks to himself. Who or what must be sacrificed for it to become a reality? And when the time comes, will he be able to do it? The future holds the answers, or... A buttload of sequels. That is the answer to that cliffhanger. A buttload of sequels. It's okay though, most of them are pretty awesome. Hey, now it's time for robot names no one will remember! Cannon Driver! Skurver! I give up! It would be nice if they had the pictures of the enemies next to their names. I mean, I can probably guess what the Skurver is, but I'd still like to know for sure. I mean, we can't all be as clear as old robot. I mean, that just says it all. I mean, what the hell's a B-tron? I'm never gonna get that. Some of these names are pretty funny, though. Heh, <laughs> blecker. Heh, <laughs> I have no idea why I find that funny. Eh. So, we're officially at the end credits. I think it's about time that I gave my final thoughts and junk. Man. Oh wait, he's not in this game. <clears throat> Even after playing it to the degree which I have, 
I can honestly say that Mega Man X2 is one of, if not my most, favorite games of all time. There's a lot to like here, and while I certainly did complain at more than a few points, most of those complaints are relatively minor. I mean, really, don't fall in the lava, perform the bubble crab exploit, don't fight Wheel Gator with Strike Chain, and we're good. Also, the little power levels over there are really nice. Kind of meaningless, but a nice little touch. The eight Maverick stages and the bosses themselves are all really wonderful. There's something great in each of them that I just love. The castle stages aren't too great, and I really don't like the reusing of Magnus Centipede stage for the final level, but really, there aren't many games where I do like the final stages. The original Mega Man X is really the only one where I've enjoyed all the final stages. In comparison to all the others, X2's stages hold up very well. Okay, what else? The music is great, I absolutely love the songs everywhere, I think it's wonderful. I have absolutely no idea what kind of instruments they used, and I don't really care, I love them. But really, it's not something that I can put into words and explain every detail of why I love this game so much, I just do. Ah, but our long journey has come to an end. Or at least it was long for me. This has been my favorite Let's Play so far, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.